Alright, hello everybody. I'm going to do a uh, video here that I should do before I talk about soldering up all these components. It'll be kind of short. I just want to talk about how uh, it's important to test these before you put a lot of work into assembling everything. And the reason is, is I purchased these switches a long time ago. I purchased them probably going on 10 years ago at this point from my last layout that I was in the process of building before I uh, left the hobby for a while because I was in college and I needed more time to do other things. And the reason I do this, I have a different way of wiring a switch machine than a lot of people do, and actually I'll show that to you. Rather, rather than having a um, momentary contact throw switch, I use two momentary contact switches. And I wired one of these up and tested it to see if I remember how to do it. And somewhere along the soldering process, I don't know if I toasted the switch, which is a possibility that I burned one of these up, or if the switch was bad in the first place. And I bought these from sort of a discount sort of electronic supplier. I don't even remember the name of it. I just remember these were ex extremely inexpensive. So I don't know if they're good or bad. So I have some test leads that I made myself with some uh, alligator clips I get at Radio Shack. I don't buy a lot of electronics at Radio Shack because they are kind of expensive. And I have here this, uh, my power supply here that I'm going to use on the layout later on. And I have that hooked up to the AC terminals here and a voltmeter. So here's how we're going to check a switch. This will be one of my control switches for going to cab A or cab B. So what I'm going to do is hook this lead up here in the middle, make sure it's not touching either other terminal. I'll switch it to on. Get my probe here and just touch it and see if I get a reading. I don't there but I should here. And I do 17 volts, 17 and a half volts. I'll flip the switch the other way. 17 and a half volts. So I know this switch, I know this switch here is good. So I'm going to put that aside. Make a pallet here. You can see my dirty messy table of wires here but there is some method to my madness. I am working out of my basement here, so. Uh, actually, I do photography. Film photography is another hobby, and you might see some of that later on, and I've developed film and uh, mixed chemicals on this table over the years, and they've sort of become uh, stained here. So this is a momentary contact switch, and it's going to off. It's normally off, so I'm going to touch here, and I should get zero for my reading. And I'll hold the switch down and touch here, and I should get 17 and a half volts, and I do. So I know that this switch is good. Now I'm not sure which one of these I toasted. I think it was, or is toasted. I think it was this one here. And I'll hook the uh, alligator clip up. Getting zero. That's the bad one. I'm going to throw that out. Uh, watch as I throw this on the floor. Okay. So let's do another one here. I'll test this one here. Hook that up. I should get zero. Press the button in. And I got a reading and then I get zero again. Let's make sure we don't have a short. Let's try that again. This one appears to be dead, and looking at it, it uh, looks like it's in good shape. The other one looked like it melted a little bit here. I'm going to put this aside, and I'll, I'll try it on the leads at the bottom after. And I don't want to have you sit here watching me do a whole bunch of testing here. So I can go through testing all these switches, and then I'll come back in a little bit, and I'll show you how I wire up one of these machines here, so that my video is more than a couple minutes long. Okay, so I tested... Alright, I tested all those switches, and all the actual toggle switches worked good, and most of the momentary contact switches worked. But I don't think I toasted one of these when I was soldering it before, because these are dead, but so are these here. So I think it's because I had cheap switches sitting in my basement for 10 years, and they got corroded and what have you. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to get some more switches here, and I should mention real quick, there's two types of momentary contact switches. Normally closed and normally open. You need switches that are normally open, meaning that they're usually off, and when you press the button in is when they turn on. 
If you had it the other way around, that when you press the button that turns the power off, you'd burn out your switch machines. And I use the solenoid switch machines, and actually when I designed my layout, I wasn't going to have switch machines. I was going to actually switch by hand using a Caboose Industry ground throws because they're a little bit cheaper. They're about six bucks or so, and a two foot by four foot layout small enough that I could reach all the switches. But Atlas right now is having a shortage of track, and I couldn't find turnouts anywhere. And I actually had to buy turnouts from four or five different, I had needed nine turnouts for the layout, and I had to buy them from four different places. I'm thinking about this in my head. Just hard to find. And the last place I was, they only had uh, switch machines with the, with the remote. And I don't like the above ground remote switch and end scale because it's very long and very, very uh, unprototypical. But I found under the table switch machines at a modeltrainstuff.com for about six bucks a piece. And I figured, you know what, if I'm going to pay a little bit less for uh, ground throws, I might as well buy the switch machines. And on the lower levels of my layout where these will reach, I thought to myself, I might as well use switch machines. They are a little handier, you can control from your turnout. And what I, the Atlas switch, the Atlas switch switch, or turnout switch, is a double pull, double throw, momentary contact switch. I think they're, they work fine, they're great, they're a little bit expensive, and I don't mind soldering these up. But I'm going to show you how I use two momentary contact switches instead. And you notice I have things color coded. So in the middle of one of these solenoid switch machines, I have a white wire, and every, every center will have a white wire going to it. Over here, I have a yellow and a green wire, and a blue and a green wire. So these are going to go to the electrical contact down at the uh, control panel wiring, all the greens, and I'll actually talk about terminal strips and things like that, or barrier strips and terminal strips and things like that a little bit later. And then one wire is going to go, blue wire, blue wire will go to one side, yellow wire go to the other side. So I'm just going to quickly come in here and stick these on. Okay. Okay, I'm back with the correct size screwdriver here. A little bit, uh, a little bit smaller here, and I got this terminal here, and now I got to put the blue wire on. Actually, I tell people all the time at work, a demo where everything goes well is no fun to watch. So, you get to watch my mistakes as well as my uh, triumphs here. Alright, turn my power pack back on over here and hook my green wires up to my alligator clips. Alligator clips, white wire to the other alligator clip. And how's everything looking? We're looking good. Got the power on. Alright guys, remember I mentioned that uh, everything's doing good, I'm looking over at my table and these were the two bad connections and I get the two good switches sitting over here. So we're going to probably edit out a whole chunk of this video. Okay, so it turns out I did indeed have a bad uh, switch wired in here. So I hooked everything up and made sure it worked this time as not to embarrass myself again. But, see the blue wire going to here, yellow wire going to that, blue wire to this terminal, yellow wire to that terminal, common wire to the center, and... Oh, that's bad. Let's try that again. Make sure your leads aren't touching. There you go.
and you'll see how I put these on my uh, control panel a little later, a little later. But I have two of these wired up now, ready to go. And you'll see uh, more of this a little a little later on. But that's how I wire one of these solenoid switch machines. And I actually know that say that the tortoise switch machines work a little bit differently. Some of the other machines work a little differently, but. Also make sure these are momentary contact switches that are normally off, not normally on, or you'll burn the, the uh, solenoid out inside of here. Um, be careful, again, electricity is dangerous, soldering irons are hot, and I am by no means an expert in that. I am a manufacturing engineer by trade, machinist by trade, I build furniture, I do photography, I don't do a lot of electronics. so. Don't take anything I said here as um, as uh, the golden rule. All right, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope I uh, answered some questions and showed you some neat things and some things you might not have thought of before. And I'm off to go find about uh, four or five more momentary contact switches that are normally uh, open. All right. Thanks everybody and uh, have a great evening.